Acceleration normally is a change in velocity over a change in time. So that means that angular velocity, how fast something spools up, is equal to the change in angular velocity over a change in time. So one way to figure this out, what the acceleration is, is we can say, okay, it went from zero to 2.36 radians per second. Zero to 2.36 radians per second in two seconds. So we will say 2.36 radians per second times one over two seconds. So the change in angular velocity divided by the change in time, and this comes out to be 1.18 radians per second squared. Okay. Um, now, we can find it another way as well, because we know that the bicycle accelerated from zero to 0 0.78 meters per second in two seconds. So the linear acceleration, A, is 0.78 meters per second uh, times one over two seconds is 0.78 divided by two, 0 0.39 meters per second squared. Okay, that's our linear acceleration that we figure out from how fast the bike is moving forward. Now, if we want to convert this linear acceleration into an angular acceleration, we use the same equation. A is equal to alpha times the radius of the wheel. Get a little crowded here, but that's how it is. Um, which is going to be 0 0.39 meters per second squared is equal to the angular acceleration times 0.33 meters, which is the radius of the wheel. So we'll do 0.39 divided by 0.33 and we get alpha is equal to 1.18 radians per second squared. Okay, very handy thing. Now we can work it backwards. Um, if we have figured out by whatever method that the angular acceleration of the wheel is 1.18 radians per second squared, we can work backwards and get the linear acceleration. So 1.18 radians per second squared, that's alpha, the angular acceleration, <coughs> times the radius of the wheel, which is 0.33 meters, is 1.18 times 0.33, comes out to be 0 0.39 meters per second squared. Same thing. Okay, so we can work these forward and backwards and it's useful to be able to do that. Okay, so this is why it's useful to learn radians. It's because you can use these equations and go directly from linear speed to angular speed or directly from linear acceleration to angular acceleration. You can also go directly from circumference to uh, radians in um, radians of, uh, of, of arc. Uh, that doesn't come up quite so often. It usually is easy, easier to go the other way with that one, but it's the velocity and the acceleration where these things really shine. Okay, I hope that's helpful, and uh, we will move on next to uh, some examples of the homework problems. Yeah. All right, now let's move on to a couple examples here. Uh, that are similar to some of the more complicated questions in your homework. Um, now, the reason I'm giving you these problems in your homework uh, is so that you can make the connection between the linear equations that we've been studying in previous chapters and the rotational equivalents that we use uh, in, in, in this chapter. Uh, it turns out that you can make pretty much direct translations from our linear uh, equations to the rotational ones because of all these analogs that we had uh, on this page here. Okay, so theta is angular displacement. It's analogous to x, which is linear displacement. Omega is analogous to velocity and so on. So when we have one of our old linear equations that use these variables, we can use the same equations for the same kinds of problems, but just substitute substitute in these symbols, and it turns the equation into a rotational equivalent. Uh, now, we actually have a lot of these 
uh, equations in our AP GAUs. Let me get this out here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, there we go. All right. So this is the AP gouge. That's a little bit glary, but we'll, we'll make it work. So these are the linear equations we've been using, these three up at the top. Um, and then down below here, they have equations which look amazingly similar and, uh, and, and accomplish the same things. So this one here, um, it substitutes theta in for x. It substitutes omega, um, yeah, omega in for v and substitutes alpha in for a. It's the same equation. It's just this uh, takes lets you figure out how far things have rotated, while this thing lets you figure out how far things have moved in a straight line. Uh, they also do the same thing for uh, velocity. So this one up here is linear velocity with the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Well, for this, they've substituted in omega angular velocity for the linear velocity, angular velocity initial for linear velocity initial, and angular acceleration for linear acceleration. So they're the same equations, they're just substituted in the, uh, the variables. Now, the one that they don't give you on the AP gouge is this one, the VX squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. There we go, get it out of the glare. VX squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. And one of the example problems I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how you convert this and how you can use it. Okay, because this is something you completely can do. All right, so take care of that later. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is uh, suppose we have a washing machine. And the washing machine has been washing for a while, and then it wants to shift to the spin cycle. So it's going to spin up from rest, so not rotating at all, to, um, to some speed. It goes faster and faster, as you know. And we're going to say that the... Angular acceleration for this is 18 radians per second squared. That's just the number we're going to use. And it's going to spool up, go faster and faster and faster and faster for 12 seconds. And we want to figure out how many radians and how many rotations occur in that time, in that 12 seconds. So to do this, it, sometimes it's useful to think about, well, what would this problem look like if it was linear acceleration instead of rotational acceleration? So the equation that we would use if this was linear acceleration, where we're given an acceleration and we want to know, and, and given a time and we want to know how far it goes, we would use the uh, x final is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. This beast that we've been using quite a bit. Now in this particular case, we're going to assume that the initial uh, count of rotations is zero. In other words, we're basically starting from the zero point if it was a linear problem. So this term is going to come out, drop out. Um, we are also assuming that it is not spinning at the beginning. We said it's spinning up from rest. The initial velocity is zero. The initial angular velocity is zero. So that drops out. So if this was a straight line problem with an 18 meter per second squared acceleration for 12 seconds, this is what we'd be left with. So the final position is one half at squared. Now. As you know, in the AP gouge, there's a conversion for this to put it into rotational, but we can do this ourselves. So the rotational equivalent of displacement is theta, which is angular displacement in radians. And that's going to equal one half times alpha, which is rotational acceleration. And time is just time. So that stays the same. Now we're given the rotational acceleration. So theta in radians is equal to one half times 18 radians per second squared times 12 seconds, but that has to be squared, 12 seconds squared. And this comes out to be, let's see, do I have glare over here? This will work. Um, 18 divided by two times 144 equals 1,296. Now remember, Theta is in radians. So this is 1,296 radians. And that is one of the things we want to figure out, 1,296 radians. So now we have to convert the radians into rotations. And remember, there are two pi radians per rotation. So we do 1,296 
radians times two pi radians per rotation. So we're just basically going to divide the radians by two pi. So divided by two equals divided by pi equals. We wind up with 206 rotations. And that's our answer. This is also an answer because we wanted to answer in radians as well. Okay. Okay, the second question that we're going to cover is on page 197 in the book, and it's about a computer disk spinning up. So if you want to look, see how they did it in the book, um, you can do that. That's where it is. Uh, I'm going to do a slightly different way than they do in the book, just to show you that there's more than one way to approach these problems. Um, okay, so the problem question is that you have a computer disk which spins up from rest to 5,400 RPM in two seconds, which is a pretty high uh, angular acceleration. And we want to know how many revolutions did it make during this time that it spun up. Now, the uh, acceleration, if we were going to do linear acceleration, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And we can uh, convert that into angular terms by saying alpha, the angular acceleration, is equal to the angular velocity divided by time, or rotational acceleration, rotational velocity divided by time. So that's where we're going to go with this. Now, the first step here is to convert our 5,400 RPMs into radians per second. So 5,400 rotations per minute. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 pi radians per rotation. And then we also want to get away from minutes and into seconds. So we're going to do 60 seconds per minute. So we're just doing a straight conversion from RPMs to radians per second here. And we wind up with 5,400 times 2 times pi divided by 60. And we wind up with 565, 565 radians per second. That is the uh, this final speed of the rotational speed of this thing. 